Now let's move towards psychoanalysis, uh, in which we're going to discuss Sigmund Freud, because Sigmund Freud is the founder of psychoanalysis. Sigmund Freud began his career as neurologist and physician in Vienna in Austria. Uh, Freud's probing of unconscious conflicts of his patients led him to the formulation of psychoanalysis, uh, his influential theory of personality and psychotherapy. So Freud uh, was a trained neurologist, not a psychologist. The patient who came to him suffered from varieties of anxieties and other disturbance. Freud and his followers developed the psychodynamic perspective, which suggests that both normal and abnormal behaviors are determined by, primarily by uh, unconscious forces. So the term psychodynamic is used because these forces believe to interact with one another. Freud's experiences in treating his patients convinced him that the unconscious mind exerted great control over their behavior. Psychoanalysis is basically a personality theory and a form of psychotherapy that emphasizes the role of unconscious factors in personality and behavior. Or you can say it is a view taken by Sigmund Freud and his followers which suggests that normal and abnormal behaviors are determined by unconscious forces. So, Freud's school of thought is called psychoanalysis because Freud's experience in treating his patient convinced him that unconscious mind exerts great control over their behavior. So, among these observations or among the observations that led him to the conclusions were slips of tongue. Uh, in which the patient's true feelings were apparently revealed and analysis of the patient's dreams. Freud came to believe that the mind often disguises dreams so that dreamer is not aware of their true meanings. According to Freud, uh, human behavior was motivated by unconscious conflicts that were almost always sexual or aggressive in nature. So he focused on early childhood experiences as a major influence on personality development. According to Freud, if you want to understand an individual's personality, you must examine his or her early experiences, which could have long-lasting effects. Freud gained uh, great fame and notoriety by suggesting that people, even children, are driven by motives that are sexual in nature. As I said, that uh, these observations led him to the conclusions that uh, patients' true feelings were apparently revealed and analysis of the patient's dreams. Freud came to believe that the mind often disguises dreams so that the dreamer is not aware of their true meanings. Like glimpses of these unconscious impulses are revealed in everyday life that can be in dreams, in memory blocks, in slips of tongues, or in spontaneous humor. So when unconscious conflicts become extreme, psychological dis disorders could result. The treatment approach to that he developed um, is known as psychoanalytic therapy, which aims at bringing unconscious cause of stress to the conscious level. Because according to Freud, one source the one uh, source of distress once the source of distress are brought to awareness, that can be changed. So let's talk about the behaviorism. Mm, behaviorism uh, include the three figures in development of behaviorism uh, based on the pioneering uh, pioneering research of Russian psychologist Ivan Pavlov, American psychologist John B. Watson. Uh, Ivan Pavlov was a Russian physiologist and John B. Watson was an American psychologist and B.F. Skinner, who worked in the field of instrumental or you can say open conditioning. And let's talk about Ivan Pavlov. I already have uh, made a video on Ivan Pavlov on the chapter of learning, classical conditioning, in which I discussed Ivan Pavlov because Ivan Pavlov worked, uh, he, he led to, his work led to the establishment of classical conditioning. He was a Russian physiologist and a Nobel Prize winner. He studied in digestion in dog, which led to the establishment of classical conditioning. 
and uh, john b watson is an american psychologist he founded the school of behaviorism he declared that psychologists should limit their research to observable behaviors uh, and john b watson rejected structuralism uh, which included both its both its uh, both its methods of introspection and um, focused on conscious mental processes Let's talk about the B.F. Skinner, who believed that psychology should restrict itself to observable behavior that could be measured and verified. Systematically used reinforcement or punishment to shape the behavior of rats and pigeon. Behaviorism. It is a school of psychology and theoretic, theoretical viewpoint that emphasizes the study of observable behavior especially as they pertain to the process of learning or you can say that it is a perspective that focuses on observable behavior and emphasizes that learned nature of behavior behaviorism it focuses on observable observable behavior which is overt and outward behavior which can be observed it rejected introspection intro, uh, rejected introspection conscious mental processes and covert behavior like all the inner processes were rejected by the behaviorism and emphasizes on the conscious uh, rejected emphasis on conscious um, consciousness which was promoted by uh, structuralism and functionalism it also rejected Freudian's notions about unconscious influences so in short we can say behaviorism rejected structuralism behaviorism rejected functionalism and behaviorism also rejected psychoanalysis so psychologists according to behaviorism that psychologists should focus its scientific investigation strictly on overt behavior that could be objectively measured and verified because psychology should study observable observable behavior not mental processes observable behavior because so they can be measured and verified now let's come to humanistic psychology it is um it is an approach to psychology it associated with abraham maslow and car Carl Rogers' emphasis on free will and individuals' control of their behavior. On the left side, you can see Abraham Maslow, and on the right side, you can see Carl Rogers. A humanistic psychology it was founded by Carl Rogers. It is referred to as third force in American psychology after the psychoanalysis and behaviors and functionalism so each person's experience in this world differently uh, the humanistic psychology was founded because they said that behaviorism is totally on observable behavior and psychoanalysis is totally based on unconscious behavior whereas human do have their free will human do have their own different perception or their own different potentials so that's why humanistic psychology said that each person experiences this world differently and all human beings have a basic need to grow to their fullest potential, different views of human nature, a variety of psychotherapeutic techniques that they developed. Carl Roger, uh, Carl Roger influenced uh, by his experience, just like psychoanalysis, Freud was... Uh, influenced by his patients same as the case with carl rogers he was also influenced by his experience with his psychotherapy clients emphasis conscious experience including each person's unique potentials for psychological growth and self um, direction emphasis emphasized self-determination free will and the importance of choice in human behavior condition uh, con he also introduced conditional and unconditional positive regard and self-concept and conditional and unconditional positive regard state that uh, you are only loved, you're only accepted according to conditional positive regard. That you're only loved, you're only uh, accepted when you complete their conditions. For example, a business uh, man or a boss will only like his uh, pe um, uh, employer, uh, only will have uh, positive uh, regards for his employer when the employer is hardworking and uh, complete his task on time 
so the boss will have a positive regards for his employee because the pl employee have uh, completed or uh, finished or completed all his conditions an unconditional positive regard is a kind of love for acceptance for a person uh, and there is no need for uh, completing your conditions for example a mother love uh, his or uh, a mother love her child without any condition no matter the child is lazy or the child is ugly or beautiful but the mother love its child so that is unconditioned positive regard in which there is no need to complete the conditions and he also gave the concept of self-concept in which there is a self-image ideal self and self-worth the picture is given to the right let's talk about the abraham maslow he was the father of human psychology he developed the theory of motivation that emphasized psychological growth and proposed the hierarchy of needs According to hierarchy of needs, there are physiological needs, safety needs, love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. Once the one stage or one step of the need is satisfied, human shift towards the next step. Like once the physiological needs, that is breathing, food, homeostasis, water, sleep, etc. Once that is satisfied, the human will shift towards the safety needs. Like you got food, you're surviving, now you need security. And once safety and security needs are satisfied, now you need love and belonging. That is your family, your friendship. So that is love and belonging. And once that need is also satisfied, now you need confidence, self-esteem, achievement, respect by other and for others that is self-esteem and once that need is satisfied now you will shift towards self-actualization that is moral creative and spontaneous and according to Abraham Maslow it is very difficult to reach towards self-actualization and very few people reach towards self-actualization so that was the end of uh, this video or this chapter chapter one is completed in this video today uh, if you like the video hit the like button Share it with your friends because sharing is caring and we also we will also apply, uh, update our new video on chapter 2 that will be the methods of psychology. So if you want to stay notified, if you want to stay updated, you can subscribe to our channel. Till then, Allah Hafiz. Bye bye.